Hi. Hi. You're getting in the way. Yes, you are. Yeah, you're in the way. You're in the way. Yeah. Okay. That's enough. Go lay down. Today we're talking about the run cam split. Uh, this is a actually and it's specifically we're talking about the run cam split hybrid. Um, this is a, a new camera from Runcam that they sent out to me to test and to play around with that is basically a, a no, almost no sacrifices HD replacement camera for um, your FPV camera that will also record you know, 1080p, 1060, all that stuff. There's one board um, here, it's a 20x20 20 20 mounting board, and then they added this FPV camera system that is both an HD recording camera here on top and then a standard definition um, and DSC camera that sends information back to the, the flight controller and then the OSD and then the VTX back to your goggles in the end. Um, but by having both in place at the same time, hey, by having both in place, you can record, you know, 10K 40, sorry, 4K 30. Guys. Guys. Go we'll play somewhere else. You're being loud. <laughs> yeah, he's just crying wolf, crying German Shepherd. Kyla, Kira, <laughs> sit. Sit down. So there's been a lot of products that have come out that are similar to the run cam split hybrid. Uh, there's, I believe, Cadex has a, an exact, uh, the same kind of version where it's got the two cameras. There's been like the run cam split three and two um, that are one camera units. And, and the problem with the one camera units, guys, shush. And the problem with the one camera units is that the what happens when you're processing all of the HD recording as well as setting that all through back into the flight controller, there, it induces latency, no matter what. It's not that much, it's a, only a little bit, but it's enough that it sacrifices the performance of the quad, especially when you're on a racetrack. Um, and so when I uh, saw this version where it's got the two separated and it doesn't induce that extra latency, I got really excited about it. But one thing that I also realized is that I typically like to shoot at 4K 30 frames per second, 30 FPS is the is the product that I usually deliver and I think it looks best in the situations most situations for me just the way that I like to do it but on a run cam 3 or on a run cam 2 split uh, basically what happens is that when you record at 30 FPS the playback in the goggles is also 30 FPS so basically an, an NTSC camera typically shoots at about 60 FPS there's a little bit more to it than that but with when you're playing back at 30 you're essentially skipping every other frame so you're missing half of the information you're doubling the latency essentially uh, it's not exactly the right way to put it but um and, and that sacrifices the performance for me um so that those cameras were never an option but with this double camera system it's much more feasible to be able to have it in your racing build so you can fly full speed with no compromise on weight and speaking of weight let's talk about the size the weight of this camera um it's uh it's a small size camera obviously it's a little bit taller than it is um wide um that's to fit those two lenses in there the two sensors um but it's not any wider than a normal micro camera so like it'll fit in any quad as long as there's enough height in the stack um for yourself so it's not it's not really sacrificing too much but what happens when you try to tilt back is like this is the maximum tilt I can do on this quad which is okay because it's a freestyle quad because if I start tilting it more it starts to push it up higher and then the top plate gets in the way you can see like the top plate would then be touching the camera right there so you know there's different kinds of little sacrifices that you have to be aware of when you're using this um, it's also a single board camera um, in the past the run cam split for example has had multiple boards to be able to allow these things and that started to increase your stack size if you built the camera into your FPV stack or into your powertrain, like where your flight controller goes and all that. Um, I have mine just VHB to the surface of the, the drone here. Um, that's just the way that I wanted to do it and I really like it that way. And then the other thing to think about is that the, so uh, the weight of the camera is only 18 grams. Um, and if you think about the weight of a normal FPV camera coming in at seven, eight, nine grams, you're really only adding 10 grams to your whole quad to add full 4K 30, 2.7K 60, uh, whatever uh, frame rate, resolution, all that stuff you want. So that's pretty 
pretty cool to me that you can have that high quality video for only a very small sacrifice of weight. For all split cameras that I've used in the past, uh, the Runcam Split Hybrid I think has the best image that I've looked at. Um, it's still not quite a GoPro, uh, it's not quite, it's, the super view is a little bit off, some things like that are messed up. But uh, in terms of like those cameras that I've looked at, this one by far looks the best. And so I'm really excited about the footage that I have been getting out of it. Um, I'll be hopefully through this video playing a bunch of different clips and stuff so you can see all of the kinds of different places that I've used this camera and, and captured footage. One of the ways that the camera managed to be so small is that it has foregone Wi-Fi. So uh, as a negative, there's no connectivity. Like you can't connect your phone to it and see what the camera's seeing. You can't change all the settings like that. But what they did was replace that with a, basically a QR code scanner. So you go in, you build out all of the settings that you want on a QR code, and then basically hold the phone in front of the camera after pushing a couple buttons on the camera, and it automatically changes all of the settings in the camera to the QR code, gives you an acknowledgement, and then it's now recording at those things. And when you hit, uh, or when you plug in your battery, it automatically starts recording, and you see the some of the settings that it's uh, recording at. So like for example if I shoot at 4k 30 it's going to show me 4k at 30 fps and then uh, an indicator in the OSD that it is recording and that's pretty cool. It's not um, you know it's it's not the most intuitive thing at the beginning but once I did it a couple times uh, I realized how powerful that actually is. Like you, you can just kind of set your settings forget about it and then you just plug in batteries and go. You don't have to you know worry about making sure that it's recording because you can see that the the tell light is blinking in the top right corner of your osd and you know you're getting the footage that you're you're getting and that to me that's pretty cool the fire and forget na nature of it is awesome so while we're talking about fire and forget um, i figured i might as well do a quick demonstration for you so goggles are on waiting for dvr to roll i'm gonna run the gopro here so i at least get some side by side for you GoPro's rolling, strapping the battery on, and plugging in the quad. Now if we wait just a second, you'll see that the, uh, you can see the camera boot up, it says H2.0, so it shows 4K 30fps in the top right corner, and then it, the tell light, the little blinking red light up in the corner comes on and shows that it's recording. So now GoPro's recording, DVR's recording, run cam is recording, so all three are going right now. So I'll walk this over and we'll fly it for a second. And here we go. So now we should be able to see all three at the same time. There's a sprinkler on. Kylo. I'm worried that the GoPro might be... Uh, Underexposed right now. There. So just a quick flight to show you that the difference between the field of view of the run cam and the field of view of the GoPro. Shh. Holy cow, dog. Field of view of the GoPro, the run cam, and then also what you see in the DVR. So I'm going to go figure out what that was all about. You broke his own mug. You broke the picture of the dog mug because he's not on it. It's only Kira. <laughs> so, this dog that's not on the mug broke the mug of the, to, with the picture of the other dog on it. You bastard. Go clean it up. Mm. Not only is the camera light, but it's also very simple to build. Um, you know, if you are running 20 by 20, you can build uh, it right into your stack, uh, your flight controller stack. Um, 
I don't have any 20 by 20 things. I don't. That's not a way that I usually build. It's uh, this product is obviously aimed more at like the micro um, or the the slightly micro uh, market. Uh, so that's that's an awesome feature. But I like to. I decided to put it into a bigger build, so I just VHB'd it. And then there's only three wires that you have to hook up. It's five volt um, ground and video, and that's it. It's simple. Speaking of five volt, though. Uh, that is a requirement is that you sh you really should not run this camera off of VBAT and if you're gonna run it off of 5 volt it drains about 800 milliamp hours at 5 volts so you want to make sure that you have a very big 5 volt BEC um, which I have in the Synergy which is the flight controller that I use the white noise Synergy it is a 3 amp 5 volt BEC and gives me plenty of power to run my camera my split, my VTX, and my receiver, as well as the flight controller and some LEDs off of all of that. So I think it's pretty common to have a pretty big BEC in your uh, in modern flight controllers, but just something to be aware of when you're setting up your build. Finally, my biggest gripe usually with cameras that are not GoPros is that they don't get super view right. You know, there's this kind of like dynamic stretching that happens with it that no one's really nailed yet and to be honest it still isn't nailed but this is the most watchable in terms of like comparing it to superview that i've ever seen um looking at like uh, some chase footage that i shot the other day like i it really was very watchable it's it's really really nice to look at um it it still doesn't give me that kind of dissociated feeling um that superview does where it's because superview just for whatever reason the way it's implemented makes everything feel smoothed out and nice and and really easy to look at um and other cameras that are more linear or have haven't done the stretching factor parts right to make it really hard to watch. So those are all the good things for me for the Runcam Hybrid. Let's talk about this, the downsides. I've already touched on a couple of them, but I'm going to kind of go back through them and just talk about the things that I don't like. First of all, 20 by 20. I just, I do not like 20 by 20. I know that this camera is aimed at the micro market. So like you want to have smaller boards, you want everything smaller built. But I just, I just despise 20 by 20, especially when you have to use M2.0 screws, which are like the slightly smaller ones uh, that you don't ever have lying around, stuff like that. It kind of makes me angry. But this is, uh, you know, this is 20 by 20, so that that could be a good for you. It could be a bad. The camera bit, um, like the the two parts, the two lenses here. Um, is very tall, uh, and if you're running a really smashed, like a like a super low frame, or or anything like that, like it's gonna be really hard to fit it in there. And then it's even harder to be able to tilt it. So like if you're wanting to run like 50 degrees, you're gonna have to have a lot of room in your build for that camera to swivel way the heck back. Um, that being said, they did put in two screw mounting holes. Um, so there's a high one and a low one. So you can change how it's mounted depending on the type of flying that you're gonna do. Um, that will help you fit it into more builds, but it is still a pretty big factor that it's going to be hard to fit it in some places. That's what she said. I, I'm confident that I'm going to lose my SD card eventually. Um, it, it is pretty easy to push the SD card out, um, so I think in a big crash or in a bump, um, it's going to eject. But what I did was I kind of cheated it a little bit and I added... Uh, a strap around the outside of my frame that holds the SD card in place so if for whatever reason I have a crash it likely won't eject that card. Um, the split comes with pieces that you can use to keep the SD card in place um, but you can only use those pieces if you have your board mounted in the stack which I don't so they weren't very useful to me because you they basically go between the screws and the stack and then there's like a little plastic bit that folds down over and holds the SD card in but that just wasn't an option for me in the way that I built this machine. Uh, I just wanted to kind of cover again like you do need a pretty big 5 volt regulator in your flight controller or your speed controller. Um, it, it does consume 800 milliamp hours which is or was for a long time like the actual size that the back in a lot of flight controllers was. So make sure that current flight controllers that you're using have a big BEC like the white noise energy. Another downside of the Runcam split hybrid is that there's no way to preview your footage before recording. So if you accidentally bump a setting or something like that and you have like your white balance way off or something and everything comes out super green, there's no way for you to know that until you go back and look at the recording. Um, you know, again, this is kind of a, one of those give or take kind of situations where like if you have less, um, you know less is more more is less kind of thing where you know it, because they took out the wi-fi functionality you're not going to be able to connect to it with your phone and see okay do i have the settings right you have to trust that you have it setting and you need to make sure that you're double checking all of that stuff and the final thing that i is maybe worth mentioning maybe it's not but the audio is atrocious like i'll play some here <laughs> 
not good. Uh, so just be aware. I, nobody was expecting the audio to be good on this. Audio is not even good on GoPros. Like, there's just no way around that. Just be aware. It's really bad. So, in the end, I do have a few different conclusions that I made while I've been using this camera. I'm going to leave it in this build as long as it lasts, as long as I don't kill it, um, because it doesn't impact the way that I fly, and it gives me two options for recording. So I always have a GoPro and, uh, and the split recording at the same time, and I basically have like high-quality DVR and then the GoPro, which can be really fun, especially if I'm using Real Steady, where the product of the GoPro doesn't look exactly like what the product of the DVR would look like. So the first thing that I wish I had done was I wish I had put this camera in a micro build, I wish I could have would have spent some time to figure out a 20 by 20 solution to find a, a, a frame that it, the camera would fit in and, and be able to kind of have that, that slightly different tool for filming. There's not really a benefit for me having this camera inside of the Super G, but if it was in something really small or in a racing build, I think that would be a really engaging way to test this camera more. I'm really impressed with how well this camera works. Um, it's It's been solid for me since day one. I've probably put 20, 30 batteries through it. I've crashed it. I've chased with it. I've raced courses with it. It's I've not noticed any kind of hiccups or latency or anything like that. I love seeing the, the tell light in the corner showing me that I'm recording. Um, and I, I just, I would never hesitate to put an SD card in there because I'd have, you know, the ability to record DVR. Essentially, that's at 4K 30. Like, that's pretty cool. I really want to get this camera system into a full-blown racing machine. Um, I want to see how good that footage looks from a race course at full speed, so I'm not having any sacrifice from having a GoPro on board. It's just super, super high quality DVR uh, running um, on board on the machine. So that's one of my next steps for it, I think, is I'm gonna take it out of the, the Super G here after a couple trips coming up and then slap it into a race build and see what it could look like on a racetrack. And my only other conclusion from this is that, you know, it, it, it's very fire and forget. I, I'm excited that, you know, uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve up front figuring out how to use the uh, QR code and getting all your settings right and dialed in the way that you like to see your footage turn out. But once you do that, it's so simple to just leave that SD card in, make sure it's locked in and it's secure, and then every time you plug in, it's automatically recording HD footage and, you know, the file sizes aren't too big so you can get a lot of stuff into a, you know, 32 or 64 gig card and, and that, you know that simplicity i think is the, is the the thing that i want to leave you with it's 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 not a pain there's nothing that else that you have to do to think about is once you get it going it's all fire and forget it's all super easy you just go fly and so that's where i'm going to leave it uh, thanks for checking out this little quick review of the run cam split hybrid i've been enjoying playing with it um, i'm going to keep getting footage and uploading it i've put a couple clips on instagram that people really liked uh, and uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to go out there and stay flying.